Jean-Jacques Rousseau's The Social Contract, first published in 1762, is a seminal work in the tradition of political theory, which posits that legitimate political authority lies not in kings or tradition, but in the collective will of the people, or what Rousseau calls the general will. Rousseau's treatise opens with the famous line, Man is born free, and everywhere he is in chains, summarizing his view that while people are inherently free, the social and political structures they construct can unjustly constrain that freedom. Rousseau explores the idea that in a state of nature, humans are free, but upon entering into a social contract, individuals surrender their natural freedom to create a political community that serves the common good. The crux of Rousseau's argument is that only the people, viewed as a collective, should have the authority to determine a society's laws and governance. He suggests that by entering the social contract, individuals gain civil freedom and the protection of property, but they must also conform to the will of the collective. His concept of the general will is central to understanding the contract. It's not the same as the will of the majority. Rather, it reflects the common interests of all participants. For the general will to be genuine, it must come from all and apply to all. It is the source of legitimate law and authority, and only laws that reflect the general will are just. The general will is also dynamic and can change as society evolves. Rousseau distinguishes between the sovereign and the government. The sovereign is the collective entity of the people, exercising its general will. The government, on the other hand, is a separate entity that carries out the day-to-day -day administration and enforcement of laws. It is accountable to the people, and its purpose is to serve their interests as expressed through the general will. The idea of the legislateur, or lawgiver, is introduced as someone who can guide the people in the formation of their constitution and laws, since Rousseau believes the common folk cannot by themselves create a society that operates under the general will. This lawgiver is a sort of facilitator who understands human nature and society. His role is transitional and non-authoritarian. In discussing the various forms of government, Rousseau suggests that the appropriate form might vary depending on factors such as climate, population size, and economic development. He outlines several forms, including democracy, aristocracy, and monarchy, noting that each has its strengths and potential downsides, and no one form is perfect for all circumstances. Rousseau's democracy is one where every citizen is a lawmaker, participatory but demanding and suitable only for small states. Aristocracy, the rule of the few, can be either natural, elective, or hereditary, and it can be a stable form, especially when the rulers are wise and the people are content to be led. Monarchy, ruled by a single person, can be effective if the monarch is enlightened and concerned with the general will, but it carries the risk of degenerating into despotism because of the concentration of power. He also argues that smaller states are more likely to foster a republican form of government, where the matter of the state can be aligned closely with the general will. The larger the state, the greater the likelihood that government will serve its interests rather than that of the people. Rousseau believes that government should be divided into various branches to balance each other. Yet, even as he acknowledges the practical necessity of government, he warns against its propensity to serve its interests rather than those of the people. The constant vigilance of citizens is necessary to prevent the government from violating the general will. Importantly, Rousseau does not believe that the social contract legitimizes all forms of governance. Rather, the legitimacy of political authority rests entirely on whether it reflects the general will. As conditions change, people may dissolve the existing social contract and form a new one to ensure their governance aligns with the common good. Rousseau also explores the notion that morality and civil religion play an important role in the state. He suggests that a civil religion is necessary to foster social unity and that citizens should adhere to a minimal set of beliefs that promote the good of the social body. The social contract's influence extends well into modern discussions of democracy, citizenship, and individual rights. Rousseau's theories underpin the ideals of popular sovereignty and underline the need for political institutions to reflect the collective desires of their constituents. 
Despite the deep thinking on politics, the social contract has its critics, some of whom argue it is too idealistic and fails to realistically account for human self-interest or the challenges of large, complex societies. Others have seen it as a precursor to authoritarianism, given Rousseau's insistence on the subordinate role of individual wills to the general will. In conclusion, the social contract offers a powerful and radical argument for understanding political authority and legitimacy. Rousseau concludes that the health of the state mirrors the general will's alignment with government action, where the true freedom and equality of its citizens tout man's natural goodness. Though the text is a product of its time, it endures as an essential meditation on social cohesion, representative democracy, and the nature of human freedom within society.